Good morning, all of you. This is the third session of pre intensive course on mathematics for student integration program 2021. In this session, we will discuss about the algebraic factors. In the previous session, uh, we have discussed about what is an algebraic expression and uh, the basic uh, theories and the information regarding this algebraic expression, we have already finished that part in the previous sessions. Now we will see about these algebraic factors. When an algebraic expression is the product of two or more algebraic expression, is that if you are having an algebraic expression, You are having an algebraic expression uh, which can be uh, expressed as the product, which can be expressed as a product. Product means it is the multiplication of two terms, two or several terms. It is the uh, multiplication. Product means the multiplication of two or more algebraic expressions. Therefore, if a single given algebraic expression can be uh, expressed as a product of two or more hmm, two or more algebraic expressions, then um, then each of these latter quantities, it means that latter elementary quantities are these quantities that we have defined, is called a factor of it. It means the factor of it. It means that simply we can say that. If this is the initial, if this is the initial uh, algebraic expression that, that we are having, algebraic expression, this is the initial one that we had, then if you can convert this into a multiplication of two or more, two or more, two or more algebraic expression, then these are said to be the factors of this initial algebraic expression. Then uh, the determination of these quantities is called the resolution of the expression into its factors. It means that if you have given an algebraic expression, you would be able to convert or transform it into multiplication or the product of several algebraic factors if it is available. Now we will discuss about an example. This is the example that we are going to consider rather than initially rather than just seeing about the algebraic expression. First of all, I will consider about the multiplication of these two terms. Here you can see that I have a, a product of x minus 5. Here I am having an algebraic expression as x minus 5 and it is multiplied with another algebraic expression called x plus 3. Here the product of x minus 5 and x plus 3. Therefore, if you need to uh, solve this uh, multiplication between x minus 5 and x plus 3, what you have to do is you have to solve this accordingly. Therefore, once you uh, perform the calculation, then you will end up with uh, here uh, the middle step. It is x into x, x squared, x into 3, it is plus 3 times x, then minus 5 x is here, then minus 5 into plus 3, it is minus 15. Therefore, once you solve it furthermore, then you will get x squared minus 2x minus 15. Here you can see this is another algebraic expression that we can take. Now, if you think in the backward uh, method of this calculation, that, uh, it means that if you now already have in this x squared minus 2x minus 15, then you should be able to write it in this form. Now, it is me. it means that you have converted this x squared minus 2x minus 15 into the multiplication of two another algebraic expression. It means that x minus 5 into x plus 3. In a case situation like this, we can say that x minus 5 and x plus 3 are the 
factors of x squared minus 2lx minus 50. It is because once you multiply or once you take the product of these two factors, then you are getting the quantity x squared minus 2x minus 50. Therefore, anyhow, if you are having the quantity x squared minus 2x minus 15, then you should be able to convert it into factors. Multiplication of factors gives you another algebraic expression. Then in the reverse way, if it is an algebraic expression, uh, if there is any factors available, you should be able to convert it into the uh, multiplication or the product of two or several factors. Therefore, that is why I have stated here, x minus five and x plus three can be considered as the factors of x squared minus two x minus 15. Now we will consider about the single term common factor. In this situation, uh, in this case, uh, single term common factor, any value or quantity, any value or quantity, which is common for all the terms, which is common for all the terms in an algebraic expression is said to be a common factor of that expression. Uh, in the uh, yesterday session, we have the briefly discussed about the uh, monomial factors of monomials. It means that if you have six times x, then I told you that you can uh, break this down into factors as six and x. Therefore, uh, we are saying this as monomial. It is because it is because we are having only one term only we are having only one term there since we are having if you are having an expression we can say this as an expression if this expression is just having one term only then we are saying such as the monomials therefore if you are having a monomial then you should be able to convert it into factors here 6x has a breakdown into factors as 6 and x. Therefore, if you are having 6x, you will have uh, this can be converted into two factors. Two factors you have breakdown. One factor is 6 and next factor is x. Therefore, these are the two factors of 6x. But uh, this concept is quite different than that. Here we are considering about the single term common factor. Here we are considering about the single term common factor. Here we are going to identify any value or quantity which is common to all the terms in an algebraic expression. Therefore, if you consider this example, if you consider the example 3x plus 3y, here you can see uh, the example 3x plus 3y. In this situation, what you can see here, uh, 3x and 3y. If you consider this 3x, 3x can be uh, factored out into 3 and x. 3y can be also factored out into 3 and y. Therefore, if you see about these two terms, now you can see that this 3 is common for both. This 3 is common for both terms. Therefore, what we can do here is we can directly take this 3 out of each and every term. If you are taking a term out of, uh, if you are taking a quantity out of each and every term, then uh, you can write down the remaining inside the bracket and uh, the taken out can be considered as a multiplier with that bracket. If you are taking it, what you can do is here, you can take this three out. Three out means it is quite like this. Now think about if you are having a quantity x. If you need to, uh, without making any harm, what you can do here is if you need, you can multiply it by three and you can divide it by three. This does not make any change to uh, the quantity which is initially we had. It is because initially we had x. Now we have multiplied this quantity by three and divide by three, again, we will 
get this quantity x. If you are having 2x, what we can do is, if you need, uh, think about I need to uh, isolate this two then, I can multiply this by two, then again divide this by two. Therefore, this two and two cancel out. Therefore, again, we will end up with this as two times x. By thinking about the similar method, what you can do here is I need to take three out of this quantity as well as from the quantity three one. Therefore, first of all, I will write this three here. This is the quantity that I need to take out. Then what we had here was three x. Now the remaining is it is three times x. Therefore, we can take here it as x. Or in the other way around, what you can do is here you need to take 3 out, therefore here what we had was 3x, therefore now it is quite like uh, multiplying by 2 and dividing by 2. Here it is dividing by 3, it is because 3 is the additional term that we have multiplied by this term. Then here also we can follow the same thing, it is 3 times y divided by 3, it is because this is the additional term that we have multiplied each and every term, therefore we have to divide it by 3 also. Now you can see that uh, 3 and 3 cancel out, here also 3 and 3 cancel out. Then what we are having here is 3 is here, then x plus y is the remaining of this. Then uh, it is no need to show this calculation once you practice it, uh, practice here. Uh, then what you can write here is if you are having 3x plus 3y, you can simply think about this. If you are taking 3 out, then the remaining should be, if you are taking 3 out from this x, then it would be x. Plus sign is there. If you are taking this 3 out, then y is the remaining part. Therefore, you can simply say this as the 3 times x plus y. This can be also again considered as a single term common factor. It is because here we are not taking any uh, these additions or subtractions as the uh, what we are calling as the algebraic expression. We are not taking any algebraic expression out of this initial quantity. Therefore, we are taking only a single factor. That is why we can say this uh, type of problem as the single term common factors. If you move to the second example, it is given as 5 times x squared y plus 15 times x y squared plus 10 times x y. Here what you need to identify is, first of all you need to identify what are the common terms that you can see here. Okay, now we will consider each and every quantity separately. 5x squared y. How this is meant? Actually, this is made from 5 multiplied with x, multiplied with another x, multiplied with y. The next term is 15xy squared. Here we can say it is 15 multiplied with x multiplied with y multiplied with y. Then here we are having 10 times x1. Then we can say this as 10 multiplied with x multiplied with y. If you see about the common factors, what you can identify is, uh, we'll see what are the common things for the, all these. Here you can see that x is common. Therefore, if you consider a single x, it is common for all these three. If you consider this y, it is also common for all these three. But uh, this is an additional term, it is only for the first term, this is for second term. But if you see about uh, these three quantities, 5, 10 and 15. Here you are having three quantities, 5, 10 and 15. If you see about these three quantities, this can be again set as 5 is equal to 5 into 1. 10 is equal to 5 into 2. Then 15 is equal to 5 into 3. 
Now, if you consider it in this form, now you can see that 5 is common for all these three terms. Therefore, what we can see is here instead of 15, we can say it as 5 times 3. Instead of 15, now you can say it as 5 times 3. Here also you can say instead of 10, it is 5 times 2. Now, if you see about what are the common factors that you can see here, the next common term that you can see is 5. Therefore, what you can do here is you can now take out all the common terms. Then if you are taking the common terms out, then what will you get here is it is 5 times x times y. This is the common term for all these three terms. If you are taking 5 times x, y, uh, what are the remaining terms in the first term? We'll see them. If you are taking your first term is 5 times x squared y, it is made up from 5 times x times x times y. And you have taken out 5 times x times y. If you see about uh, the, com if you cancel out the common terms with each of these, the only remaining term that you can see here is x. Therefore, we can say the, the, the remaining term for the first term or the remaining quantity for the first term is x. Likewise, if you repeated it for the second and third terms, for the, the second term, it is 15 times x times 15 times x times y times y divided by 5 times x times y. Then the common terms will be cancelled out. Then 5 and 15 cancel out for 3. Then here we are getting this as 3 times y. Then next term is 10 times x y. Here we are getting 10 times x times y, then divide this by 5 times x times y. It is the common term that we have taken out. Therefore, once you cancel out, you can see that 2 is the only remaining part there. That is how we are getting x plus 3y plus 2 here. But with the practice, we are not going to do these uh, calculations again and again. Therefore, with the practice, you should be able to clearly, uh, in a single step, you should be able to write down, uh, take, the, take out these factors. Now, also, you can see that 5 times x times y. This is a single term that we have taken out. Then it is common for all these three. That is why we can consider this 5xy is also a single term common factor. Therefore, after taking this factor out, the remaining would be x plus 3y plus 2. Uh, in this similar manner, you can uh, we can follow it for the extend it for the third example. In the third example, it says that uh, 6 times x cubed minus y squared times z minus 3 times x squared y squared and z squared. If you see about the common terms that you can see is 3 will be common. It is because 6 can be expressed as 3 times 2. Therefore, 3 can be considered as common. Then here, x cube is there. x cube is here. x cube and x, uh, x, cube and x squared is here. Therefore, you can consider x squared as a common term. If you see about these y terms, y squared is here, another y squared is here. Therefore, you can directly take out this y squared. Then z is here, z squared is here. Then z can be considered as a common for both. Therefore, if you see about these two terms now, uh, you have taken these three out. Therefore, remaining would be 6 divided by 3 is 2. Then uh, among this x cube, you have taken x squared out, therefore remaining would be x. y squared has totally taken out, z has totally taken out. Then 
we can obtain this as it is equal to 2 times x. Then we can see that negative sign or the minus sign here. If you again uh, look back to the quantity which we can see in the second term, 3 has completely taken out, x squared has completely taken out, y squared is completely taken out, but from this z squared, they have taken the z out. Then the remaining of this would be equal to z. That is how we are getting this as 2x minus z. Then we can say that this 6x cubed times y squared times z minus 3x squared times y squared minus into z squared equal to 3 times x squared y squared times z into 2x minus z. That is how we can take this uh, single term common factor out of this quantity. Now we will uh, look about the factors of certain binomials. First of all, we will see about what is this, uh, what is meant by binomial. Uh, in the uh, starting of this session, I have told you that if you are having only one term, then we have said such expression as monomial expression. If you have two terms, now here we are having one term only, therefore we have say it as mono here. Then if you have two terms connected with plus sign or minus sign, therefore it is quite uh, like this. Now think about 3x plus 2. Here you can see that this is the first term we are having, this is the second term we are having. We are having two terms here. Then if you are having two terms, then such expression is said to be a binomial. Such expression is said to be a binomial. It is because we are having uh, we are having two terms uh, connected with plus sign or minus sign. That is why we are taking this as a binomial. Now we will see about uh, how to factor out uh, several uh, types of binomials that we are having. The first uh, one we are considering or the first type that we are considering here is difference between two squared terms. Two squares means two squared terms. If you are considering the difference between two squared terms, here I will consider one squared term is a squared and next uh, squared term is b squared. If you are having the, if you need to get the factors for difference of two squared terms, what you can identify here since we are having the squared terms, definitely we should have two factors if there is any factor then what you can do is first factor would contains the uh, difference of these two and the second factor would be considered as the addition of these two quantities. Therefore, if you have the difference between two squared terms, then it can be factored out as the a minus b into a plus b. Now, if you multiply these uh, two factors together, you should be able to obtain a squared minus b squared. If you perform the calculation, a minus b into a plus b, then you will get it as a times a, a squared, a times b, it is plus a b. Here it is minus b times a minus b a, then uh, minus b into plus b, it is minus b squared. Uh, in, the, uh, in the very first session, you have learned about uh, three laws. Therefore, according to that, you can say that A into B is equal to B into A. Therefore, we can cancel out these two terms. That is why we are taking this as A minus B squared. Since you multiplied these two factors and you have obtained it as A squared minus B squared, 
Therefore, you can say that these two would be the factors of this a square minus b square. Now we will uh, look about an example related to the obtaining factors for difference between two square terms. Here you can see that uh, first of all we will obtain this uh, uh, 9x squared minus 4y squared. Here we are having uh, 9x squared minus 4y squared. If this is, uh, first of all we have to check whether this is a squared term or not. In here if you see about this squared term is only for the term or the quantity x only. But if this is a complete squared term, you have to express this 9 as also a squared term. If you see about this, what you can do is you can simply take 9 as the 3 squared. 9 can be expressed as 3 squared. Then x is now, uh, it is x squared term we are having. In here, we are having four times y squared. The squared term is only valid for y. Therefore, we have to convert this four also into a form of a squared term. Then we can take this as two squared times y squared. If you complete in these squares, then you will get this as three times x squared minus, here you are getting two times y squared. Now you can see that these are having these are the, can be considered as completing x squares for the first term as well as for the second term. Now it is quite similar to the form of a squared minus b squared. It is now somewhat similar to this a squared minus b squared. If you are having a squared minus b squared, you can factor it out as a minus b into a plus b. Now instead of a and b, what you are having is instead of a, you can see it is 3 times x. Therefore, instead of a, we are substituting 3x, then minus sign is there, b is 2 times y, b is 2y. Likewise, we can uh, write the next bracket also. The only change is instead of minus sign, we will have the plus sign here. Then we can get this as 3x minus 2y times 3x plus 2y are the factors for the quantity is 9 times x squared minus 4y squared. We will look about another example uh, using the same rule. Here we can see it as 125 t squared. Okay, before uh, discussing about this example, I will consider this. If you are having 3 times x squared plus minus 5 times y squared. If you are having uh, a quantity in this form, but uh, so far you can observe that x, x has this squared term, only y has this squared term. There is no squared term for 3 or 5. Therefore, what you have to do at the initial stage is, first of all, uh, you have to write down the first term as a complete square as well as the second term. Then what you can consider here is how you can write this 3 as a squared term of some quantity. In the yesterday session or the session number 2, what we have discussed about is we have considered this as square, square root of 3. If this is square root of 3, then we can say this as the 3 to the power half. If you consider the 3 to the power half and if you take its squared term, uh, power of a power, then you can multiply it together, then you can get it as 3 to the power 1, which itself equals to the value 3. Therefore, instead of this 3, what you can write is 3 to the power half into 2. And this 3 to the power half, instead of this 3 to the power half, you can write it as square root of 3. Then you can write this as square, square term of root 3. Using this concept, what we can do is here, we will write this square root of 3. Then square it. 
then x card is here. Similarly, for five, we will get this as root five, then square term, and then y square. Now you can see uh, root three has a square term a as well as for x. Root five has a square term as well as for y. Then we can say this as uh, root three x to the power two minus root five y to the power two. Using this concept, but now it is quite similar to the concept of a minus b squared. Quite similar to the concept a minus b squared here, it is quite like a squared, here it is like b squared. If you are having a squared minus b squared, what we have done was we have written it as a minus b into a plus b. Using this concept, now you can write down this quantity. Uh, once you write it, what you will get is instead of a, you will have root 3x. Instead of b, it is now equal to square root of 5y. Then next one is root 3x plus root 5. This is how we are performing this type of calculation. Now we will focus on the example, example given in this slide. If you see about this example, it is given as 125 times t squared minus 5. First of all, you need to identify what are the fact, uh, what are the, uh, how you can write this 125 as a square term and 5 as a square term. But prior to this, uh, as soon as we see about these two terms, we can simply identify that 5 is common for both of these. It is because we can simply say that if you divide 125 by 5, you will get a value uh, as 25 without the zero remainder, no remainder is here. It means that it is exactly 125 is exactly divided by 5. Then uh, using this concept, first of all, what we can do is, first of all, we can take 5 out of this expression. If you take 5 out of this expression, what we can uh, have as the remaining is, it is 25 times t squared minus 1. 25 times t squared minus 1. Now we have take, uh, take this 5 as a single term common factor. And now we have obtained an uh, expression as 25 times t squared minus 1. We all know that uh, 1 can be considered as 1 to the power n. Any power of uh, 1 is equal to 1. Using this concept, what we can write here is 1 is equal to 1 to the power 2. It is because we need to write this term as a uh, squared term. Therefore, what we can write here is uh, here, uh, we, I will write this term first. 1 is written as 1 squared. Then t squared is given. 25 also need to be write as a squared term. We know that 25 can be written as 5 times 5, which itself equals to the 5 squared. Then we will write this 5 squared here. Then 5 is common for if you consider about the quantity inside the bracket, what you can obtain here is here it is uh, quite similar to uh, this uh, 5 times t squared minus 1 squared. This is what we get now. Then this is quite similar to a squared minus b squared. Then using the concepts that we have discussed so far, 
Uh, we can write this as uh, 5 is a single term common factor that we have considered. Then the remaining is 5t squared minus 1 squared. Then you can write it as 5t minus 1. And this is now equal to 5t plus 1. That is how we can obtain the factors if it is given in this form. Therefore, if you need to identify the factors of certain binomials, if you suspect that there is a single term common factor, first of all, you have to take this single term common factor out of the expression and then try to obtain the factors for the remaining quantity. It is the concept that I have used here. First, I have taken the single term common factor then perform the calculation for the remaining part using the concept of this a squared minus b squared. Then uh, we will consider about this, the summation of two squared terms. Uh, if you are having the summation of two squared terms, it will not have if it is in the form of this x squared, uh, a squared minus b squared, if we are having the form of a squared minus b squared, we do not have any defined factors for this uh, as the in the uh, set of real values. Therefore, we are not going to discuss uh, any factors for this a squared uh, plus b squared. Uh, we may be able to identify factors using some complex methods. Therefore, that is why it is included as there is no simple method as the given previously to obtain the factors for a squared plus b squared here. Uh, therefore, we are not going to factor out if we are having it in the form of a squared plus b squared. Now we will discuss about the, the difference between the two cubic terms, two cubic term. Uh, so far we have discussed about the difference between the two squared terms, a squared minus b squared. Now instead of this squared terms, we will consider uh, what is the method that we can follow if you are having the uh, difference between cubic terms. It is the a to the power 3 minus b to the power 3. If you can see this format, two cubic terms connected with the minus sign, what you can obtain here is the first factor would be always equal to a minus b. It is the difference of these uh, terms a and b, not the cubes, uh, the bases, uh, the difference of these two bases a and b. Then the next factor would be consist of the squared term of the first quantity appeared in the fact, fact, this factor. It is, we have to get the squared term of A. Therefore, we will get this as A squared. Then uh, I will get the, the laterally mentioned term, squared of the laterally mentioned term. Therefore, without considering this notation, just take this value b and then square it. Then we will get this as b squared. Then we are having a squared. Here we are having plus sign. And thereafter, what we have to do is we can multiply these two terms. Without thinking this uh, connected sign, we have to multiply this, the quantity a and quantity b. If you multiply them, then you will get this quantity as a, B, and if you have used the minus sign here, then this can be considered as the plus sign. Therefore, if you are having the factors for the, if you need to get the factors for the difference of two cubic terms, first what you have to do is, you have to take the difference of the bases first, then square term of first base, then multiplication of the bases and connected with plus sign, then uh, you have to take the square term of the lateral dimension base.
Now we will consider about an example related to this. Here it is given as 8x cube minus 27y to the, uh, 27 y cube. 8x cube minus 27y cube. You can see that now uh, we are having the x cube as well as this y cube. But we do not have a cubic term for these two numbers. Therefore, first of all, what you have to do is you have to convert or you have to rewrite these numbers or digits in the form of cubes. Then 8 can be written as 2 to the power 3. X can be considered as X to the power 3. Then minus 27 is 3 to the power 3. Uh, y is again Y to the power 3. Therefore, what you can write here is it is 2x to the power 3 minus 3y to the power 3. Now you can uh, consider the factors of this. Uh, the first factor would be uh, the base. Uh, this, uh, the first base and second base has to be considered and it is connected with always this minus notation. Here, you are getting it as 2x. It is uh, minus notation should be used here. Then it is 3y. Thereafter, what you have to do is you have to consider the square term of first base. You have to consider the square term of first base. It is 2x squared. Then as the last term, what will you have? What will we have is 3y. Now we have to con consider its square term. It's now 3y to the power 2. And thereafter, you have to multiply these two quantities. It is 2x and 3y has to multiply. And this is, uh, here we have used the minus sign. Then we will have the plus sign here. Therefore, what we can, uh, if you solve this furthermore, then you will get this as, 2x minus 3y, then square term of 2x, it is uh, 4x squared. And here you are having plus sign, all these are plus signs, therefore this would be plus 2 into 3, it is 6 times xy, then this plus 3y squared, it is equal to 9 times y squared, 9 times y square. This is how we are taking the difference between two cubic terms. Here, uh, this is the next example included for under this uh, difference between two cubic terms. Uh, here we are having 64 times t cube minus 1. We are having 64 times t cube minus 1. First of all, we have to write down this in the form of uh, complete cubes of uh, the first term and the second term. Therefore, uh, 64 can be considered as 4 to the power 3. Here it is t to the power 3 and minus sign is here. 1 can be considered as 1 to the power 3. 1 to the power 3. Then uh, we can rewrite this as 4 times t to the power 3 minus 1 to the power 3. Therefore, we can perform uh, perform this uh, breaking down this into factors. The first factor will be 40 minus 1. Second factor would be uh, 40 squared. Since it is minus sign, we have to use plus sign. Then 40 times 1 will be here. Then plus squared term of lateral initial base. Therefore, if you solve this furthermore, you will get 40 minus 1 here, then 16 t squared plus 
4 times t plus 1 would be the factors of the quantity given as 64 t cube minus 1. we will consider about the summation of two cubic terms. When we discuss about the summation of two square terms, a squared plus b squared, uh, we did not have a simple method. No, we did not have a simple method to make this into factors. But if you consider about the summation of two cubic terms, summation of two cubic terms, you can consider it in this way. Here we will have a cube plus b cube is here. Then uh, to consider uh, or to get a factor out this, what you have to do is you have to take the addition of the bases first. Here you will have this as a plus b addition of these two bases. Then same as previously, the square term of first base would come first and the square term of uh, second base will come last. Then multiplication of these two terms, it is a times b. Then since you have used the plus sign here, then this will be equal to minus. Therefore, in the previous one, what we had was a cube minus b cube. Then what we had was first we had a minus b, then we had a squared plus b squared then the connecting sign was plus. Therefore, this is what we have discussed previously and now we are going to discuss about the summation, how to factor out the summation of two cubic terms. The method is first you have to take the addition of the bases, then square term of the first base, square term of the last base, then bases has to be multiplied with each other and then connect with the minus sign. Here we are considering one example. It is 8x cube minus plus, minus, here it is plus 27y cube. 8x cube plus 27y cube. First, what we have to do is convert this into a complete cubic terms. It is now 2 to the power 3, x to the power 3, 3 to the power 3, y to the power 3. Therefore, we can rewrite this as uh, 2x to the power 3 plus 3y to the power 3. Now uh, we can, can uh, we can uh, break down this into factors. Uh, this is the first base, 2x, second base is 3y. Therefore, we will get this as 2x plus 3y. Then we have to consider the square term of first base. Then square term of the second base. And then multiply these two bases. 2x multiplied with 3y and thereafter we have to connect it with the minus sign. Therefore, if you perform this calculation, you will get this as 2x plus 3y here. Uh, 2x to the power 2, it is 4x squared, then minus 6 times xy and thereafter uh, 3 squared, it is uh, 9 times y square. Therefore, this is what we are getting as the uh, factors for 8x cubed plus 27y cubed. Another example coming under this addition of uh, two cubic terms. Here uh, it is given as 64 times t cube plus 1. Then what we can consider here is uh, it is 4 cube 
t cube plus 1 to the power 3. Then we can consider this as 40 cube plus 1 to the power 3. Then what we can get here is it is now 40 plus 1. Then 40 squared is here. Then 1 squared comes here. Then 40 uh, is multiplied with 40 multiplied with 1. And you have to connect it to the minus sign. Once you perform this calculation, then you will be able to obtain the answer as 40 plus 1. Here it is 16 times t squared minus 4 times t plus 1. This is the answer you are getting for addition of the two cubes or the uh, factoring uh, the addition of two cubes. Now we will consider about the factors of trinomials. Uh, previously we have discussed about what is monomial. If you are having the form of AX, single term, A times X, then such expression is said to be a monomial. If it is in the form of AX, plus b, then it goes binomial, here it is not the, not this, just saying as, a, not the form, if it is a single term, here it is a single term, here uh, rather than saying uh, ax, it is better to write it here like this way, if it is, if your expression has single term, then it is monomial. If you are having two terms connected with plus or minus signs. Now, what we can consider as the trinomial, it is said to be three terms joined together either by positive or negative signs is uh, called uh, trinomial expression. It is uh, quite like this. Now we can say uh, this as trinomial. If you are having uh, three terms, three terms connected with positive sign or negative sign can be now considered as the trinomial. And in this section, what we are going to do is we are going to identify the factors for trinomials. In this section, we are going to identify the factors for trinomials. This is an example given for you. Uh, it is now uh, given as x squared minus 2 times x minus 50. Uh, in this section, we are just uh, looking for, for this uh, square terms only. It is in the form of the quadratic equations. Here we are uh, just deal with the quadratic equations. If you are having this, then we will consider it as the quadratic equation. This is an expression we are getting as the quadratic expression. And if you equate it to a certain value, then we can say it as a quadratic equation. If it is equal to zero, then it is a quadratic equation. Otherwise, we can consider it as a quadratic expression. It is quite simple like this. Uh, I will explain it. If you have the form of ax plus b, then we can say this as the linear form. 
It is because the power of x appears here is 1. It is the linear form. If you can see the form of x squared plus bx plus c, then we can see that uh, uh, this is squared term is here. Therefore, we can say it as a quadratic equation. It's a quadratic equation. Then uh, we will have this as x cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. If you can see in this form, then uh, we are saying that this is a uh, cubic expression, linear, quadratic, and cubic. And here we are not going to consider about this biquadratic or any other higher order uh, expressions in these sessions. Now you may understand what is a quadratic expression and if it equates to a certain value, then here I have just equating to zero, then it is said to be quadratic equation. Now what we are going to do here is, first of all, uh, we are going to identify the uh, factors for this quadratic expression. First of all, we will identify the factors for the quadratic expression. And uh, I have to tell you this thing also for the quadratic expression, we can identify the factors. Here also for the quadratic equations, we can identify the factors as well as itself, it turns into the roots of the equation. Therefore, for the quadratic equations, first identify the factors and thereafter itself it converts to roots. But for the quadratic expression, we can just identify the factors on it is because it is not equal to a certain value. Since it is not equal to a certain value, then we cannot identify the roots. We are just stopping at this point. We are only identify the factors, but for the quadratic equations, we can identify the factors as well as the roots. Okay, now we will see about uh, the steps that we need to follow to identify the factors for a given quadratic expression. Here you can see that um, we are having the uh, expression as x squared minus 2x minus 50. Uh, here, uh, if this is a trinomial, if it is in the quadratic form, hmm? we are just discussing it for the quadratic form only. If it is a quadratic firm, uh, for, uh, form, then you should follow this form ax squared plus bx plus c. Therefore, always uh, we are considering this is the highest order term. This is the highest order term we are having. Therefore, if you have given any quadratic expression, you can rearrange the terms. And now as an example, uh, think about if it is given as minus 2x minus 15 plus x squared. To perform this calculation, first you have to uh, convert this into the standard format. Therefore, if you write it in the standard format, first term should be this, uh, this uh, highest order term. It means that x squared has to come first. Then second term is uh, the term which appears in the uh, letter x. Then here it is minus two times x. Then at last we will get the constant term. It is minus 15. Once you convert to an equation into this format, then uh, you can follow the following steps thereafter. Uh, so far we had uh, x squared minus 2x minus 15 and we need to identify what is the first term and last term for this. You can see that uh, first term is plus x squared and we can see that We can see that last term is now minus 15. Not only the numeric uh, uh, 
the magnitude of the value, we have to consider the uh, sign of this value as it is. Therefore, first what we have to do is, first you need to multiply these two values. Here, we are going to multiply this x squared with minus 50. This is the first step we need to follow. x squared minus 15, then we will get this as minus 15 x squared. First, we have identified this quantity is x squared minus 2x minus 15. And uh, we have identified that this is the first term that we are having. And this is the last term we are having. As the first step, what we have done was we have multiplied the first term with the last term. And we have obtained it as minus 15 x squared. Then the second step, the second step, the second step it says that now we have to resolve this fifth minus 15 x squared into factors of two terms. Since we are having a quadratic equation, we can have only uh, two linear factors. We cannot have more than two linear factors if we are having a quadratic equation. Therefore, now we have obtained this, uh, in the first step, we have obtained uh, this, yeah, we have already obtained for the first step, it is equal to, x squared multiplied by minus 15, then we have equated it into minus 15 x squared. Now in the second step, what we have to do is, we have to identify all the possible uh, factors, all the possible uh, two factors for this minus 15 x squared. The ways that this minus 15 x can be built up. The first way is, uh, uh, here we are not going to identify this uh, numeric digit. Uh, we are not going to follow this procedure. Uh, 15 as one factor and x squared as another factor. We are not going to follow this procedure. We need to just identify them in the terms of x. In the terms of x, we need to identify. Therefore, uh, the, po the possible terms, hmm? then we need to uh, factorize the quantity that we have obtained as minus 15 x squared. Once you factorize this, then the possible pairs that we can have is minus 15 x times x would be there, plus 15 x times minus x would be there. Then next possible value is 3 x my times minus 5 x and Next one is minus 3x times plus 5x. Therefore, all together we can see that there are four pairs that we have identified. All together four pairs we have identified. And here you can see these are the terms that we have identified. Under the second step, if I repeat it, in the first step we are taking the multiplication of the first term and the last term or the constant. In the second step, uh, the result obtained at the first stage should be factorized. The third step says that if you consider, if you look back to the, uh, the original uh, expression that they have given for us, it is x squared minus 2x minus 50. Now we have to consider, we have already identified two factors associated for this multiplication. And now you have to pay your attention for the middle term of this quadratic equation. The middle term is minus 2x. Now, what you have to do is now to identify what should be the appropriate uh, factor set uh, for this equation, we have to identify the factor set which gives the addition as minus 2x. If you perform this calculation, here we are having minus 15x and we are having plus six. 
If you add this, then you are end up with minus 14 next. If you add the second set, it is plus 15 next. Added to the uh, x, then it is plus 14 next. Then 3x added to minus 5x. You will end up with the calculation as minus 2x. Next one, it is uh, plus 3x, so minus 3x plus 5x, then you end up with the calculation as plus 2x. But according to the calculation or the given problem, we need to identify the set which gives the value as minus 2x. Therefore, now you can see that this is the appropriate set uh, which gives the value for value as my, the addition gives as the minus 2 times x. Then in the next stage, what you need to do is, uh, first you need to identify, first you need to uh, write down uh, the, the identified pair. The identified pair is the, or the suitable pair is 3x and next value is minus 5x. Now you need to write down this minus 2x in the form, including this 3x and minus 5x. It is because uh, the initial expression has given the value as uh, x squared minus 2x minus 15. Now you can break this minus 2x into uh, 3x minus 5x. You can break down this into 3x minus 5x, but uh, the initial values has to be, in, uh, the other terms has to be keep as it is. Here x squared will be there and minus 15 will be there. Uh, the, uh, but to have done here is you have now instead of this minus 2x, you can write this as plus 3x and minus 5x. In this situation, it is okay to interchange these two terms, but uh, for some situations, uh, with the practice, you have to identify what should come first and what should come second. Therefore, what we can do now is, uh, now we have written down uh, this x squared minus 2x minus 15 in this form. Now you can uh, identify the factors. Hmm? First, you need to identify the factors for first two terms. It is x squared plus 3x. Then uh, the next set of terms are minus 5x minus 15. Therefore, if you see about the set of values, then uh, you can get it as this is the first set of values you are having. And this is the second set of values you are having. Now we have to identify the single term common factors for these two. Therefore, if you uh, identify the single term common factor for first set, then you will get it as x times x squared x times x plus 3. x times x plus 3 for the first set. In the second set, you can identify minus 5 can be considered as a factor then minus five times you see it as x plus three. Now you can see that uh, in the uh, writings in this blue color, you can see that uh, this has identified as a common factor for uh, inside the laterally mentioned term. Now you can see that x plus three here you can see as well as in here you can see. Therefore, again, you can take out uh, this. You can now take this x plus 3 out of this. If you take x plus 3 out of this, then the remaining for the first part would be x. The remaining for the latter part would be minus 5. Therefore, this results the factors as x plus 3 into x minus 5. That is how we are uh, obtaining the factors for any given trinomial. This is the easiest way that you can identify the uh, factors for trinomials. 
But with the practice, this will be really easy. Uh, the only thing that you need to have the practice for this only. Here, this is another example included uh, in the calculation. Now we'll see how we can perform this. Uh, here we are having uh, the calculator. We can perform the calculation. X squared plus 14X minus 50. What we need to identify is uh, two linear factors for this quadratic key. First of all, we can multiply it is x squared multiplied with minus 15. Then you will get it as minus 15 x squared. Then we will have the factors as minus 15 x with x. Then plus 15 x with minus x. Minus 3 x with 5 x. 3 x with minus 5 x. But in here we have at the uh, very initial stage, we have identified the, uh, this addition. Uh, here it is minus 15 plus x. Here this gives the value as minus 14x. Here this gives the value as plus 14x. This gives 2x and here it is minus 2x. Therefore, if you can easily identify the uh, set of values, which satisfy the condition of this plus 14 exit because this is the middle term that we are having here. Then what we can write here is uh, instead of this plus 14 x, now we can rewrite this here it is x squared. Instead of plus 14 x, we can have this as uh, plus 15 x minus x minus 15. Then uh, we will isolate these two terms and the uh, third and fourth terms separately. Then first set of values uh, have the common factor, single term common factor as x. Then this would be x plus 15. Then here we can see it is minus x and minus 15. Then, then the common factor is minus 1. Then x plus 15 will be here. Therefore, we can have it as x plus 15, then this will become x minus 1. Therefore, this is how we are getting the factors for the given quadratic expression. This is another example included. In this example, uh, so far we have discussed uh, with the things uh, that we had uh, uh, coefficient of the quadratic term as one as well as now here uh, we can see that there are two quadratic terms included in this expression. Therefore, now we'll see uh, if, it's, if it is a trinomial, we have to follow the same procedure that we have discussed previously. Uh, first, we will have this expression. It is 2 times m squared plus 7 times mn minus 22 m squared. Then uh, we will multiply this. Here it is 2 m squared and minus 22 m squared. Uh, for 2 m squared multiplied with minus 22 m squared. This results the value as minus 44 m squared and m squared. Now we have to uh, break down this into a uh, set of factors. 44 can be considered as this uh, minus 44. And here we are taking one m here and one n here. It is because in the other factor also, we should have these letters. Therefore, here we will get mn or else in the other way around plus 44 mn into minus mn. And uh, what you have to pay the attention thereafter is uh, we should be able to uh, obtain the value of these two uh, quantities. The addition should be 
plus 7 and when therefore definitely we know if it is 44 and 1 this cannot be a factor as well as this cannot be a suitable factor to obtain this uh, plus 7. Then uh, 44 can be thereafter obtained as 2 and 22, uh, 2 and 22. Then uh, it cannot be also a factor, 2 and 22 cannot be a factor of this. Then the next possibility, we have, we have already identified that uh, uh, 4 and we have identified that 44 into 1 into 1 cannot be a factor. Then if you see about this 22 and 2, this also cannot be a factor. Then the next possibility is 11 into 4. If you see about this 11 into 4, uh, we will see that the subtraction gives the value as 7. Therefore, uh, we will look for this set of values. If you are having this uh, minus 44 m squared n squared, this minus 44 m squared n squared can be now written as uh, minus 11 m n into 4 times m n. Or else we, we can write it as plus 11 m n into minus 4 m n. Then the addition should give the value as plus 7 m n. If you see about this addition, the larger value is negative, uh, therefore minus 11 plus 4, this cannot be the uh, suitable value for us. But if you have this addition, then plus 11 in mean minus 4 in mean definitely gives the value as plus 7 in mean. Therefore, now we will uh, look about this set of values. Then what we can write here is, here we will write this as, uh, it is given as 2 times m squared, then here it is minus 22 m squared. And then uh, 7 mn is here, then we will have to write down, uh, I will write this as it is 11 times mn, then minus 4 times mn. This is what we have written here. Then uh, we will uh, categorize these two first and third term and fourth term thereafter. If you see about the first two terms, then you can see that M is the common uh, term for the first two terms. Then the remaining would be 2M and here it is plus 11M. Then uh, here we will get minus 2 times n can be taken out, minus 2 times can be taken out, it is because it is common for the third and fourth one. Then the remaining would be minus 2n means plus 2m is remaining and plus 11n is the remaining part. Now if you see about these two quantities, you can see that it is common for both. Thereafter we can say it as 2 times m plus 11 times n, then we can identify these are the remaining quantities, it is m and minus 2n. Therefore, these are the factors that we can identify for a given trinomial in this form. Okay. Uh, now we will extend this into the uh, how to identify the al fact algebraic factors uh, for a given algebraic expression uh, with more than two terms, two or three terms. Then so far we have discussed about the three terms also. Therefore, we will discuss these four, four terms using this example. Here we are having the example as ax plus a y minus b x plus b y. Uh, here, uh, as the way it is given, we can uh, consider these two. It is because as soon as this one, we can see that a is common for first two and b is common for second two. Therefore, what we are getting here is here I am getting a times x plus y for the first part. Then I am taking minus b out. If it is minus b,
it is minus b not the plus b minus b if it is b minus b then we can take this as again x plus y now you can see that x plus y is common for both therefore we can take this x plus y out here then we will get a minus b here that is how we can perform this calculation or else if anyone needs to take x out of these two and y out of these two we will look on that way also now you may think that if you are having x plus a y minus b x minus b y if you just need to take the uh, consider these two terms and these two terms i will uh, make them closer ax minus bx is here plus ay minus by is here now the first two terms are these and the second two terms are these therefore if i continue the calculation uh, somewhat here for the first part you can take the x out from this uh, two terms then a minus b will be the remaining then you can take y out of this then you can see again a minus b is the remaining now you can see that a minus b is common for both then the remaining has to be uh, written inside bracket then it is x plus y now if you see about the answer using second method and the answer using first method both are similar therefore you can use one of these methods to obtain the answers there is no any hard and fast rule saying that you need to get the first two terms or uh, the second two terms or uh, first and third term with second and fourth term there is no any uh, specified rule according to the situation you have to identify which two terms should be connected uh, combine and take and out the common factors and which should the uh, term two terms should be consider for the uh, latter step likewise with the practice uh, this will be really easy for the calculation and now we will move for the algebraic expressions with the five terms Uh, in this example it is given as it is quite uh, somewhat uh, different from the previous examples that we had discussed so far here it is given as x squared plus y squared plus 2 times x y plus x plus y uh, in here if i see about the first three terms if i see about the first three terms uh, it is quite similar to a thing which we have discussed previously. Now think about if you can rearrange the terms in this way, x squared plus, I will take this 2xy uh, as the second term and then I am writing this y squared. And uh, I will keep this part as it is. Uh, I will keep aside this. Here I will have x plus y. If you see about this part, the terms that we have given as x squared plus 2x plus y squared, you can simply consider about this expression. If it is remember uh, what you have learned in your school ages, uh, if you had a plus b squared, if you are having a plus b squared, what you have done was you have considered the first squared term then the square term of second one then plus since it is plus sign two times a b now this is quite similar like that a squared instead of a it is now x squared instead of b it is now y squared then two times a b is that two times x y therefore if it is in this form then you should be able to write it in the form of x plus y squared Therefore, uh, the expression which appears in this section x squared plus 2 times x y plus y squared, we can write this part as x plus y squared. And here you can say this as x plus y within bracket. I will write down it. It's because this is the only remaining part we are having. This is the only remaining part we are having. Therefore, I have taken it into a bracket. Then 
what we can see in between these two terms is here we can see x plus y is there and here also we can see another x plus y is there. Therefore, what we can consider is we can take one x plus y out of this expression. Therefore, if you consider the first part, if you consider about the first part, then you will get x plus y square d is here, then remaining would be here x plus y. To make x plus y, what you have to, once you have taken this x plus y out, then remaining would be one. Uh, don't make this as zero, it is because uh, once you multiply these two values, it should use this uh, value as one. It will not be then equal to zero. Therefore, it has to be make it as plus one. Therefore, the final answer can be now uh, taken in this form. Therefore, this is the first factor you have identified. It is equal to x plus y. And the second factor is now x plus y plus this is how we are performing uh, the algebraic expression with five terms. Uh, in a case like this, sometimes you may need to uh, rearrange the terms in a suitable way. Therefore, first of all, uh, if it is given in the uh, question like this, first of all, you have to rearrange the terms accordingly. Thereafter, you have to identify the suitable factors and thereafter you have to take the common factors out and uh, using this method you can obtain your final loss. Now we will look about this binomial expansion. This is the, this is the theory that we have used uh, uh, here to obtain this x plus y squared anyhow. Since it is a, a small thing that you have learned in your previous ages, that's why I have directly used it in here, but uh, the concept for this is now uh, discussed under this binomial expansion. Okay. Now think about uh, in this binomial expansion, what we are going to discuss is, if you are having uh, the form of binomial, it is quite like this, a plus b, this can be 2x plus 3y, uh, 5x plus 7y, 2x minus 7y, likewise you may have the values. If you need to consider, this is said to be binomial, it is just the addition or subtraction of two terms, then if you are having this addition or subtraction, then you will, you, if you need to consider its nth term, here we will take this as nck here, and it is the combination nck, and this has to be multiplied with a to the power n minus k into b to the power k. a to the power n minus k into b to the power k. Now, if I write down this, uh, this combination of this n c k, this is a notation, it means that we need to choose k number of elements. We need to choose k number of elements out of n. If you are using this notation, this notation or the notation with bracket, then what you can do is you can rewrite this as n factorial divided by k factorial into n minus k factorial. This is the definition for n c k or what you are writing as n k. Using this notation, we have to identify and the answers uh, that we need to obtain for NCK has given in this triangle. Now, this is said to be the Pascal triangle. This is said to be the Pascal triangle. For the Pascal triangle, what you can see here is uh, for n equals zero, you will have only uh, a single term. It is because uh, the zeroth power of any term is equal to zero. That is why we are getting a zero as only one and only one uh, term is here and its coefficient is one. If n is equal to one, if n is equal, it is like a plus b to the power zero. If n is equal to 1, a plus b to the power 1, 
then it is equal to a to the power 1 plus it is quite like uh, a plus b and now you can see that uh, the coefficients are 1 and 1 here starting from 1 then 1 and 1 then always the starting one is 1 and the ending term is also 1 and now you can get the addition of these two to get the middle terms therefore 1 plus 1 gives the value as 2 it is quite uh, similar to this if you are having a plus b squared what you will get is a squared plus 2 times a b plus b squared now do not worry about uh, how to get this a squared a b and b squared we will discuss it will coming under this part uh, so far we are discussing about this n c k part only then uh, for it is for n equals 2 if it is uh, n equals 3 a plus b to the power 3 will be, uh, will be here then it will be considered as a to the power 3 plus 3 times a squared b plus 3 times a b squared plus b to the power 3. This is how we are writing down this expression and if you see the coefficients you can see uh, if it is n equals 3 a cube it is 1 then second coefficient is 3, third coefficient is 3, fourth coefficient is 1. Therefore, this has obtained by taking the addition of these two and this is taken by addition of these two values. If it is uh, the power 4, a plus b to the power 4, then you can write it as a to the power 4 plus uh, 4 times a to the power 3, b plus 6 times a squared, b squared plus 4 times a b to the power 3 plus b to the power 4. This is the expansion of a plus b to the power 4. Then you will get this as uh, first term, uh, first coefficient, it is 1, you can see it here. Second coefficient 4, likewise 6, 4 and 1 are the remaining coefficients. Therefore, here you have obtained 1 plus 3 equals 4, then 3 plus 3 equals 6, 3 plus 1 equals 4. Therefore, addition of the numbers at the previous stage gives this Pascal triangle. Here you can see 1 plus 4, it is 5, here it is 10, here it is 10, here it is again 5, and these values going as it is. For the ends, it always gives the values as 1. That is how we are making the Pascal triangle. can see the additions gives you this set of values. Therefore, now I have written these uh, expressions, but uh, the method of writing this expression is using this binomial expansion. We will discuss about how we can uh, perform this calculation. And this is just for your knowledge. Here you can uh, how this uh, factorial n, if you are, are considering factorial n, it is defined as n times, n minus 1 times, n minus 2 times, n minus 3, likewise up to, we are ha having it up to 2, 3 times, 2 times 1. Uh, for the multiplication of the integers from this, uh, these numbers from 1 to n, use this as the n factorial. This is said to be the uh, factorial n factorial we are uh, pronouncing this as n factorial n factorial is the multiplication of 1 to n including all the numbers inside there therefore if you are performing if you need to identify an expression using this binomial expansion uh, rather than using this NCK, this is the theory NCK, using the NCK is the theory, but rather than using the, this, uh, this method, uh, you can directly use the Pascal triangle. How to uh, draw the Pascal triangle? It is one here, then another two ones will come here, then one addition of these two will come, then one, 1 plus 2 it is 3, 2 plus 1 3, plus 4. Then 1, 1 plus 3 it is 4, 3 plus 3 it is 6, 3 plus 4 it is 4, 1 comes. Then 
one is by the this uh, one one plus four five four plus six n six plus four n four plus one five then next stage it is one five one plus five it is six here it is fifteen twenty fifteen six and one hmm? then if you need to get the next stage what you need to do it is one one plus six seven six plus fifteen twenty one fifteen plus twenty thirty five twenty plus fifteen thirty five fifteen plus six twenty one 6 plus 1, 7, 1 comes here. Therefore, uh, if you see about uh, the way of obtaining this value, 1, 7, 1, 6, 1, 5, 6, 15, 15, 20, 20, 15, 15, 6, 6, 1, and this comes here, and this one comes here. Therefore, this is how we are uh, creating the Pascal triangle. And uh, the Pascal triangle can be used to obtain the value for this NCK. And now we have to pay the attention on how to obtain this A to the power N minus K and B to the power K. Using some examples, we will look about uh, getting these terms. So uh, this has to be we are taking the summation. Uh, it is not just this uh, here. It is better to write in this way. It is a plus b to the power n. And here it goes the summation. Uh, k goes from 0 to n. n c k a to the power n minus k into b to the power k. And here I have not uh, included the summation. It is a mistake. Therefore, uh, please correct it in this form. This is the correct form. Uh, the obtaining of uh, each term can be uh, using this, uh, this part, but thereafter we need to consider its summation also. Okay. Using the binomial expansion, uh, we will try to consider these uh, a minus b squared and how to take these values. Uh, first, we will consider about this uh, binomial expansion. If it is given in the form of a plus b to the power n, then we can consider it as sigma n goes from zero, uh, k goes from zero to n, k chosen from n into a to the power n minus k into b to the power k. Now we will see about how we can perform this calculation. Yes. Okay. Uh, now we will have this as uh, a minus b square. Here we are having a minus b square. Now we can see value of n is equal to 2. Value of a given here is uh, a. And the value given for b is minus b. These are the things that we are having so far. Since this is very simplest one, uh, we can consider it this as uh, this is the general form we are considering. Uh, first, we are taking the square term of first term, then square term of last term, then uh, multiplication of these two terms and multiplied with two, it is minus two AB. This is the answer obtaining, but using the binomial expansion, we should be able to uh, obtain these answers. Therefore, using the binomial expansion, what we can do here is we are having this as a minus b to the power 2. Therefore, first we will consider these matters. Here we are having 2 and k is 0. Then a to the power n is 2 
minus zero will be considered. Uh, value b is minus b to the power zero is considered. It is for k goes from zero. Hmm? Then this has to be added to 2c1, then a to the power 2 minus 1 since value of k is 1, then minus b to the power 1. Plus next one is 2c2, then we are getting a to the power 2 minus 2, then minus b to the power 2 will be considered here. Therefore, uh, if you consider about the Pascal triangle, now for here you can see that if n is equal to 2, we have to identify this row. Here it gives the n equals to values are 1, 2 and 1. Therefore, uh, the values that you have written for 2, 0, 1, 2, 1, uh, this uh, 2, C, 0, 2, C, 1 and 2, C, 2, 1 would be respectively 1, 2, and 1. Therefore, using the Pascal triangle, you can obtain these values. 1 is here, 2 is here, again, 1 is here. Using the Pascal triangle, we have obtained these values. Then, a to the power 2 minus 0, it means that it is a square. We know that 0 power of any value gives the value as 1. Then, here you can see that a to the power 2 minus 1. a to the power 2 minus 1 is a to the power 1, which itself equals to a. Then here you can see that minus b to the power 1 itself equals to minus b. Here you can see a to the power 2 minus 2 it is a to the power 0. Then you can see that minus b squared here it is actually minus b squared. Here also minus b minus b. Minus b squared gives the value as plus b squared. Now you have to solve this. 1 into 1 into a squared, it is a squared. Then 2 into a, a to the power 1 is a. 2 into a into minus b, it is minus 2 times a b. Here 1 into a naught gives the value as this will be equal to 1. Then 1 into 1 into b squared, it is plus b squared. Therefore, that is how we can write this as a minus b squared is equal to a squared minus 2 times a b plus b squared. Uh, since this is a uh, very easy calculation, we are not going to uh, just uh, drag this calculation, this number of steps. Therefore, in simply what we are writing here is here we are having a minus b squared. Therefore, we can write this as a squared, it is the uh, squared term of the first base, uh, first number. Then minus b squared gives the value as plus b squared. Then two times the multiplication of these two values. Two times a into minus b, it is minus two times a b. Therefore, this is how we are performing this calculation. And uh, then we will move for the next part. It is the obtaining the value for uh, a plus b squared. In here, you can see uh, a plus b squared is here. According to the uh, binomial expansion, if it is a plus b squared, what we have to get is sigma k equal 0 to n, n c k, a to the power n minus k, b to the power k. Therefore, uh, using that concept, we will uh, identify the values first. n equals 2, uh, then a equals a and b equals b. Therefore, the original values can be used as it is. Therefore, uh, when n e uh, k equals 0, then we will get this as a to the power 2 minus 0. B, uh, a to the power 2 minus 0 plus b to the power 0, then 2c1, a to the power 2 minus 1, b to the power 1. It is because we are having n minus k and k. Hmm? We are letting k equals 1, then n minus k would be 2 minus 1. Then it is 2 uh, with 2, therefore n is 2, k is 2 at this moment, 
then a to the power two minus two b to the power. If you perform the calculation using uh, what you have learned under the Pascal triangle, here it is one two and one it is four n equals two. Therefore, using that values, we can get uh, the calculation two zero one is equal to one. Here we will get the value as two. Here the value is equal to one. A to the power uh, two minus zero is a squared. B to the power zero is one. A to the power two minus one is a to the power one itself equals to a. B to the power one itself equals to b. Here a to the power zero and b squared is here. A to the power zero itself equals to one. Therefore, we can take this as uh, one times one times a squared. It is a squared plus two times a b. Then plus b squared will be the answer for this expression. And using this concept uh, here, it is just using this concept to obtain the answer for this two x plus three y squared in the previous one also. After obtaining this equation, you can directly perform the substitution. Okay, uh, but apart from this, uh, I would like to uh, discuss uh, some more thing regarding this. Uh, I will just discuss an example for this. Uh, if you need to uh, perform this expansion, now think about if you are having uh, 2x plus 3y. If I ask to obtain the expansion of this, how you have to do this? First of all, you need to identify uh, n equals 3. Then you have to identify the value of k accordingly. Value of a is now 2x. Value of b is now 3y. Uh, for the expansion, uh, what you have used as the binomial expansion, if you are having a plus b to the power n, you are writing it as sigma k goes from 0 to n, n c k, a to the power n minus k with b to the power k. Using this concept, now we will try to perform it. Uh, for the a, you are having the value as 2x. For the va value b, you are having 3y. Value of n is now equal to 3. Therefore, uh, we will substitute it. n is equal to 3. Then 3 with 3c0. Then value of uh, this, it is value of a is 2x. Then 3 minus 0 has to be substituted here. Then Value of b is 3y, value 0 is substituted here. Then this plus, we have to substitute k equals 1, 3c1, then it is uh, 2x to the power, 3 minus 1, 3y to the power 1. 3c2, 2x to the power 3 minus 2, 3y to the power 2, plus 3c3, 3. here this has to be writing this way, here it is uh, 3y to the power 2, then plus, we see 3 2x to the power 3 minus 3 3 y to the power 3. Now, uh, if you look about the uh, Pascal triangle for n equals 3, here we can see that value of n is equal 3. Therefore, uh, value of since value of n is equal 3, if you see about the Pascal triangle. Uh, for value of n equals 3, you can see that values should be 1, 3, 3, and 1 respectively. Therefore, we will uh, do the substitution there. We will do the substitution. Here we are having the value as 1 according to the Pascal triangle. Value is 3. 
value is three here and value is one. Now we have to uh, identify these values. It is now two x to the power three minus zero, it is three, it is two x to the power three. Then a uh, zero power of any value gives the value as one. Then here we comes to the uh, two x to the power three minus one, it is two. Then value is three by here. Next value set is it is uh, 2x to the power 3 minus 2 is 1. Then we have to get the 3y square. Then 2x to the power 0, 3y cube. Therefore, 1 times 1. It is one two x to the power three two x to the power three it is uh, we can say it as two to the power three into x to the power three therefore we will get the here as eight x cube then this plus here we are getting uh, for this part we use another color for this part we will get it as four um, x squared then if you do the calculation then three times four x squared plus three one three into three nine into four it is now thirty six x squared y then this plus uh, for this part you will get the calculation uh, here we will get this as two x and here we will get this as nine y squared two x and 9y squared. If you perform this calculation, then you will get it as 3 times 2, 6. 6 times 9, it is 54. xy squared will be there. And this plus, uh, this calculation becomes 1. It is the 2x to the power 0. This becomes 1. And 3y cube, it is 27. Like Therefore, if you substitute that value here, then you will get the answer as 27 like you. Therefore, if you consider the 2x plus 3y to the power 3, then you will get the answer in this way. This is all what I need to discuss under this session and uh, thank you all for uh, participating for this session.